To start off tearing this thing apart, I basically just start looking for screws and unscrewing them. Um, I am keeping very close track of what I take from where and uh, taking pictures as I go. But 90% of this is very straightforward and uh, taking apart screws. There are a lot of them, um, but uh, it goes fairly quickly. Some things take a little bit more thought and uh, process to take apart, and uh, some things even take a little bit of a brute force and violent manipulation, especially if anything is seized with rust. But most things with a little bit of uh, tweaking work fairly well. Some of the screws get full of uh, sawdust and you have to clean out the track so that you can uh, loosen it. But uh, most everything is, is straightforward. The particular control arm has a lot of small pieces in it and uh, if you keep track of how they go out, how they come out, they uh, go together a lot easier. Once I have all the pieces apart, um, I'll soak it in a vinegar bath. 50% uh, vinegar, 50% water, and uh, this really does a, a quick job of taking care of the rust. I'll let it sit overnight, but uh, most of the time it's done in four or five hours or less. If anything's sticking up too high, I'll just use a rag to wick it up and uh, get it up a little bit higher. Once everything has been cleaned in the bath and it's been sitting for a while, I bring it over to the sink and scrub it all off with a wire brush. It takes any of the leftover residue off fairly quickly. Um, at this point, you just have to be careful. Either keep it wet or immediately dry it off, um, get the oil on it or paint it. Otherwise, you start getting a surface rust. But uh, if you dry it very quickly afterwards, you can mitigate that fairly easily. This just takes a little bit of elbow grease, um, but a lot less than if it didn't go in the bath. Once it has all been scrubbed down, I will mask off what I don't want painted and then paint it. I just use a, a Rust-Oleum in this particular blue. I know blue isn't the traditional color for it, but this is my shop color and I really like the way it looks in the end. Now the fun part of taking off all the masking and uh, really seeing how it looks. And this one absolutely blew me away. I love the look of this, uh, this whole saw. is It's gorgeous. And at this point on, everything just gets better and better as I have to uh, start putting it all back together. The name tag on this uh, was brass raised with a uh, black painted background. I found if I took a file lightly over the brass it would shine it up nicely and uh, get a really nice look on it. I was very pleased with how that came out. The reassembly is uh, fairly straightforward. Uh, it's just a lot of oiling the screws and making sure everything is put together correctly. I did a lot of going back and actually checking the, uh, the pictures that I took ahead of time, making sure that I had a home for all of those screws. The uh, tricky part was the um, angling uh, arm on it so you can actually lock it at a specific angle. Just a lot of little pieces in there and springs and uh, um, I had to make sure I followed the documentation on how it went back together. A lot of oil and it goes pretty well. I was able to uh, get a piece of wood shaped out for the bed and attached with uh, 12 brass screws that uh, purchased for it. Really like the way that went together. And once it's all locked in place, I could uh, take it for a test drive and try it out. Very pleased with how this came out. Looks great and uh, it's a wonderful tool to have in the shop. To test it out, I wanted to make a, a simple frame and I don't have any particular use for it, but I wanted to test the angles on it with something a little bit different. So something that's not 45 degrees. And uh, it was kind of a learning curve with, uh, with this. is isn't just like a traditional electric miter box, uh, miter saw. It uh, took a little bit more work in making sure things didn't move around. And it was very weird feeling such a short stroke with such a long saw because I was only using a certain portion of the blade. But then once I cut all the pieces, I could try them together and was very pleased at how accurate the angle was on it. Uh, no gaps and a lot of fun. I'm very, very happy with that. So I'll be using this in the future. 
So there you have it. I finally have the miter box all done. And this was really ended up being more of a pain than I was expecting. Um, most all the pieces were there and ready to go. Uh, but I found out I was missing one of the, uh, the grub screws that keep the stabilization so that I can actually adjust it one way or the other. Um, <laughs> it was kind of fun because I, it's a rare thread. At, it's a quarter 24 thread that really doesn't exist anymore. Most places have stopped making it since the 40s. Uh, but a new good friend of mine from over in uh, Europe said, hey, I can make one of those for you. And he actually had a hand cranked um, metal lathe for uh, cutting screw threads. And so he was gracious enough to, uh, to send me one of those. And I got this up and running, but the only problem was in putting it together, I knocked it off of the bench and broke a cast iron plate that goes over here. And so I, I was back to square one um, until I realized I had this piece of metal that was the exact same size. I could put a dimple in it and it did the exact same thing. Um, so it looks kind of funky at the moment. But it's up and working and hopefully at some time in the future I will replace that. But until then, oh well. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, this build. This was a fun one to restore and put back together. Um, I don't know exactly how much I'm going to be using this. Uh, it's, uh, it's a lot quicker to just freehand cut, but uh, there are times when I want a specific angle and this will come in very helpful for that. And uh, you'll probably see it in a few projects from uh, here on out. That's about it. It was an enjoyable project for me. I hope it was for you as well. Um, if you did like the video, please hit like and think about subscribing. Also, I want to say a huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are amazing and uh, just encouraging me every day. I love your, your thoughts and comments. Thanks so much. Also, if you like the video, you might like one of the other videos around. You might find something that's uh, interesting there too. And until next time, have a wonderful day.